Hello, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selena, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Hola, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rocks. In the news, military to work with police for 2018 elections. New railings for railway bridge by month end. And students caught in early morning accident. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. The Fiji military forces will work closely with the police force in ensuring a safe election next year. RFMF Commander Rear Admiral William Inalpoto says this is to help maintain the current peace and stability in the country. Kelly Vadala reports. As thousands of Fijians will be electing in the government of their choice next year, it's important they vote in a safe and secure environment. We are behind the police. The police takes the lead in uh in security, but it, uh, we are watching and we are uh, uh, listening uh, to the ground as to what is uh, happening. Uh, but we, uh, we certainly uh, are ready to support the police in any way to ensure that the current peace that we have prevailed, we hope that it will con continue uh, well into the future, you know, through elections, past elections. We've learned from the past. Uh, where law and order had broken down uh, in, in Fiji uh, and we do not want that uh, to happen again. Now Porter says the military will ensure the cool culture is not repeated and want people to freely exercise their right to vote. The RFMF says they will ensure that Fiji does have a peaceful and safe elections next year. They will also accept the outcome of the election and will take action if the need arises. And we hope that people will go and exercise their right to elect whoever they want to elect into power. Uh, but uh, I would like to assure the people of the nation that uh, the RFMF stands ready to come in uh, and help. Whatever government uh, is put in place by the people, that's the government that we serve. RFMF says soldiers will be undergoing internal security exercises in preparations to the 2018 general election. Kelly Badala, FBC News. Two more babies have died at the neonatal intensive care unit at Suva's Colonial War Memorial Hospital. The Ministry of Health confirms that these two fatalities follow four deaths reported last month, all of whom were found with the drug-resistant bacteria Acinetobacter bormini. The Ministry and the WHO are working together to respond to this current outbreak. A similar outbreak of this bacterium occurred within the NICU at CWM Hospital between December 2016 and March of this year, in which seven babies died. Railings for the new railway bridge will be installed at the end of the month. Fiji Roads Authority Acting Chief Executive Robert Sin has confirmed the safety of the public is paramount. Therefore, installing of the barriers is important. Savara Thumbo reports. This bridge is used by pedestrians following the permanent closure of the old bridge. FRA Acting CEO Robert Sin has confirmed the authority is currently working towards installing barriers along this new bridge. Uh, the fabrication of fencing component is underway and we expecting to be uh, installed by end of this month. It's a good decision. Get rid of the extents for the small kid. They should uh, make railings yeah, on, the, on both sides eh? so that to have, uh, the children will have safety while going. Meanwhile, Losori Town Council Chief Executive Akhtar Ali is hoping there will be no delays in installing barriers along the new rail bridge. The decision to put the barriers end of this month, that's almost two weeks from now, uh, well, that is a good decision, but what if something happens in the two weeks? Uh, what if something happens before a barrier is placed? The barriers, in fact, in reality, barriers should have been placed first. And then you close the bridge and then get the people across the, to, to be able to use the new bridge. That should have been the way in terms of risk mitigation or risk management. Meanwhile, the Fiji Roads Authority is considering options to demolish the old railway bridge. Sabera Tambua, FBC News.
A 17-year-old student and a bus driver are in Bar Hospital after a traffic accident this morning. It is believed two buses belonging to the same company collided between Karavi and Ravi Ravi. The accident involved around 19 students from Xavier College, 22 from Barsanatan College and 32 from Camille College. Six students were treated at the Lautoka Hospital for minor injuries and sent home. It is alleged one of the buses was parked at the bus stop when the other hit it from behind. It is believed that the driver of the second bus was speeding. Police say they will question the driver of the second bus once he is discharged from hospital. Investigations are continuing. Still to come, Fisheries Ministry works on future plans and assesses divided on verdicts. Stay with us. <laughs> Bula FM number dua and The Ministry of Fisheries has been allocated close to $19 million to run its operations. Fisheries Minister Semi Koroi Lavisau says the priority will be improving enforcement and strengthening legislation ensuring the sector is sustainable. Maggie Boyle tells us more. The fisheries sector is a significant contributor to the economy and the powers that be want to keep it that way. We hope to be able to establish the data which we can then uh, have uh, information and uh, make informed decisions on how we go ahead, uh, you know, because it will provide the stock uh, assessment. In the new budget, the transshipment levy has increased $100 to $450 a tonne, boosting revenue at our ports. My understanding is that uh, they are collecting uh, revenue from the transshipment of uh, fishing vessels to motherships. Uh, which they ought to have uh, the unloading uh, facilitation within our ports. With $3.26 million allocated for coastal fisheries, Corral says building capacity will be the focus. So in short, we have uh, new stations to be established. We wanted to uh, uh, install more ice machines, so one in Tithia. Uh, in Moal, and there's a few uh, other areas we wanted to build a new ice plant in Wenbokas. The fisheries sector contributes to a little over 1% to the country's GDP. With the ministry established and its own budget allocation for the first time, there are hopes that the service delivery will improve and significantly increase the GDP to a little over 2%. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Two High Court assessors have found Isaac Ivana Jr. not guilty of manslaughter, while one found him guilty of the charge. The assessors returned their opinion this afternoon. It is alleged that on the 5th of April last year, Jr. and his younger brother, Suliasi Waisele, fought over a bowl of dal, which led to Suliasi's death. Earlier today, during his submission, the defense lawyer told court that Jr. had no intention of killing his brother. He said Junior was acting in self-defense as his younger brother was throwing punches at him. In its submission, the state said that Junior was inconsistent in his caution interview and in the witness box. The state also referred to the post-mortem report which states that Weisseler died of a single stab wound. The judge will deliver his verdict tomorrow. A 40-year-old mother convicted of one count of infanticide has been given a three-year suspended sentence by the High Court. Vika Lalingavoka was sentenced to two years imprisonment, suspended for three years. The court heard Lalingavoka gave birth to the child in her bathroom at Cunningham in Suva on July 18, in 2011. The baby proceeded from the accused body and fell on the floor. Lalinga Woka pressed her baby's nose and tapped his cheeks, but he did not respond. She wrapped the baby in a cloth, placed him inside a brown bag, and placed him outside their home. The mother of four has also been ordered to undergo counseling sessions with the Department of Social Welfare. A group of experts from New Caledonia will be arriving this Friday to assist the Water Authority in diagnosing the problem of an algae bloom at the Vaturu Dam in Nandi. WAF Chief Executive Opatai Ravai has confirmed the experts will also study the whole plant as well as the quality of the water. The Water Authority does not only focus on the dam, they also check the activities surrounding the dam such as logging. According to WAF Chief Executive Opatai Ravai, regional experts are committed to fixing the problem 
and are planning to decide on what type of technology is needed. Um, no, just have a look and give the opinion because they faced these problems as well in the past and they've dealt with it in a, a similar way and uh, using perhaps different technologies but the, um, um, well, they'd like to come and see it for themselves and perhaps give us some pointers eh, along uh, what technologies are there to use. Uh, Yesterday we aired a story about Patterson Brothers Transport Limited being convicted for failing to file tax returns to the Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority. In our footage, we had shown Patterson Shipping. However, the shipping company has clarified that they are two different companies. We had sought clarification from FERCA before running the story, but we do apologize for any inconvenience caused. Ahead in Sports with Jamie, he will have more on the BOG semifinals, but up next is Rachel with Business. Thank you, Jackie. Good evening and coming up in business tonight. SPSC confirmed CEO. And in growing Fiji, Tamavua EY Bridge repairs still in planning stage. Stay with us. I'm Anare Sorbokuro of Nayabu Wenebuka Telebu. Whenever I want to tune in to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM. Only the classic. My name is Lita. We love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hideaway Resort and Spa. Gold FM, only the classic hits. We're here at Tano Waterfront Lotoka. Love listening to Gold FM. Only, only the, the classic, classic hits. hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back. Leading business tonight, Krishika Narayan has been appointed Chief Executive of the South Pacific Stock Exchange. Narayan has extensive experience in the stock market, having worked in, at the exchange for the past eight years in different roles. She was manager legal and compliance and also board secretary prior to assuming the role of leadership. SBSC Chair Dr. Nurbano Ali says this made her an able and suitable candidate for the executive role. ANZ Bank has announced a campaign to reward commercial customers who promote use of card over cash when doing their everyday shopping. Country head Saad Minim says the, they've uh, contributed to, committed to supporting a cashless and paperless society. Minim says they want to help businesses make the transition as customers are now demanding the use of digital banking. Three cashiers won a competition for showing a significant increase in card use over cash. We now join Savanada from HFC Bank with the latest from the world markets. Good evening. The U.S. dollar opened today at the lowest it's been against our Fijian dollar since the beginning of 2016, falling 32 points to stand at 0 0.4846. This is off the back of the collapse of efforts by the Republicans to overhaul or repeal Obamacare in the U.S. Senate on Tuesday. This news was a sharp setback to President Donald Trump in the Republican Party's seven-year quest to kill the health care law. Uncertainty around the issue rattled financial markets as it cast doubt on the chances of getting Trump's other domestic policy priorities, such as tax reform, through a divided Congress. This is, however, great news for those using their Fijian dollar for exchange or payments in U.S. dollars. That's a wrap from me, Vinaka. Thanks, Avanada. Looking at today's exchange rates, the Fijian dollar strengthened against the Chinese yuan and the American dollar closing at 327 and 48 cents, respectively. Closer to home, the Australian dollar weakened, closing at 60 cents, while the Austra New Zealand and PNG Kina strengthened, closing at 65 cents and 135. As for the commodities market, an increase across the index today as oil prices closed at 46.22 a barrel, gold rose to close at 1,243 an ounce, and silver followed suit closing at 16.33 an ounce. In growing Fiji tonight, the Fiji Roads Authority is still working on the design of the Tamavua EY Bridge in Lamy. Works on the bridge will be carried out in two stages. Acting Chief Executive Robert Sen says the first a model bridge will be built so there is no disruption of traffic flow. The bridge was temporarily closed last year after FRA engineers discovered a crack in the supporting steel beam. Sen says the other bridges around the country are also being examined.
But there are a lot of other um, smaller bridge. Um, you'll see the bridge in Tauva is been um, currently in, uh, been built by the our contractors. Uh, so th there are other bridge uh, on the pipeline that FRA will be um, taking on uh, this financial year. And that's business this evening. Now to the latest in sports. Here's Jamie. Thank you, Rachel, and good evening. Coming up in sports, HFC Fair Brother Challenge launched. And Super Marathon gains momentum. This and more after the break. Mirchi FM is hot. Game one of the HFC Fair Brother Challenge is set to kick off on Saturday. The Fiji Rugby Union expects a tough battle with Naita Siri out to beat trophy holder Nandunga and redeem their early exit from the Skipper Cup competition. Meli Tavanga reports. The Fiji Rugby Union has encouraged fans to come down and watch the match anticipated exciting encounter between the two rivals. Huge match. Uh, uh, well, Nandunga will work hard to defend the trophy. I know Naita Siri is going down with the uh, intentions to redeem themselves after they are lost in the semi-final and they will put up a good fight. The FRU will be issuing a rugby kit to all participating teams challenging the trophy. We will be using rugby balls and we are also contributing to their preparations for the teams that are participating in the Fair Brother Trophy Challenge. Uh, we will be issuing them uh, $2,000 uh, for their preparation fund. HFC Bank is proud to be the official sponsor for the coveted rugby trophy in the country. Some changes in the format, some changes in the um, uh, game program, and basically we are quite um, uh, honoured to be accommodated in such a way as part of the consortium. Like Tassiri last won the Fair Brother Trophy back in 2013, and they revealed that they will leave no stone unturned. Nandrunga, on the other hand, has held the trophy for a record of 81 times and will be out to make it 82 against the Highlanders. The winner of the challenge every week will walk away with $5,000. Meli Tawanga, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the HFC Bank Ratu Tusai Vorenge Bainimarami Shield, which kicks off on Friday, will be challenged by the top four teams that qualified for the Vodafone Vanua Challenge semifinals. Navasa will host Ovalau in the first challenge on Friday, followed by Lautoka, and the last challenge will be against Rewa, who are the losing finalists. The game on Friday starts at 3 p.m. at Lawanga Park in Singatoka. In the Manimarama Shield Challenge, uh, we will be contributing and distributing to them $1,000 to help them prepare. Navosa, being the winner of the World Phone Championship, is also the holder of the Manimarama Shield. We will present the trophy the shield to them on Friday before they, they, uh, before they face Avalau. The FRU has appointed Seni Rusi Serovakula as coach of the Fiji Warriors to the National Rugby Championship in Australia. Serovakula was also in charge of the Fiji Warriors during the Pacific Rugby Challenge earlier this year. The team to play in the NRC begins camp next month. Fiji is likely to play two away matches against Brisbane City and Melbourne Rising in September. I mean, we, we, uh, we, we, may look, we may look at some players, although probably thinking about the, the squad in, in year one, maybe maybe not. But, but for me, if, if we were going to include an overseas player, it would, would either have to be someone who's currently in the Flying Fijians or, or someone that I'm seriously looking at for inclusion in the future. The 90 football side will miss one of its key players going into the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants semi-final against Lautoka on Saturday. Despite this and the fact that BOG history has not been on its side for a number of years, has not deterred the Green Machine's preparations in any way. Vasil Prasad reports. 
1996 was the last time the Jet Setters won a BOG title. 21 years later, this set of players have confidence to break the long drought at Chachal Park. Long time, uh, 91 the last BG, but uh, we have uh, not uh, done well in BG like the past 10 years. But uh, we hope uh, this year we're going to do well. In. Nandi has also not won any local tournaments in Lautoka. Hopefully, you know, we, we can. Uh, it's a challenge for us because Nandi has never won a title in uh, Latoka, so it's a challenge for the boys uh, to see if we can break that. Already a major blow for the Jet Setters, their form striker Josevata Dungundangi has been ruled out of the semi final. Apart from him, uh, all the boys are pretty fit uh, and ready to go. Uh, we also introduced a few young boys, um, two school boys, and another debutant in the last match against Lambasa. Uh, they played very well, so you know, they've given us options. Despite the one goal loss to Lambasa last weekend, the Green Machine is working on improving its mistake under the guidance of coach Yogen Radat. Uh, Lotoka is a pretty good team, but uh, nothing is uh, impossible. I mean, they beat us two times uh, this year in the league, but we are looking forward for this uh, game on Saturday. Nandi takes on Lotoka at 3 p.m. on Saturday at Chachal Park. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, Lambasa is just two wins away from lifting the Battle of the Giants title after a lapse of two decades. The Bahamas Young Alliance are flying high and will be the team to beat at the finals this weekend. Eleanor Turangaviu caught up with the team at training and filed this report. Manasa Levadi will be a key man in the Lambasa defense when they take on Rewa in the semi-finals of the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants tournament this weekend. The defender is focused on winning the BOG title as it's been 20 years since the trophy was in Lambasa. Likely our aim is to win the title since it's been a long time since we haven't won the title and we are looking forward and the boys are aiming and they are all looking forward for the same final against Real this Friday. Lambasa is the only team to have dropped points in the pool games while Rewa, who is also undefeated, finished as runner-up from its pool. Lambasa played Rewa in the semi-final of the Fiji Fact at Ratudakambau Park where it lost 6-5. The two teams met again in the National League a fortnight ago when they played to a nil all draw. Uh, it will be a tough game since they are, it's their home ground and it will be hard for us to go and, uh, beat a team from their own home ground. But it all depends on God and may the best team win. The Lambasa side is also dealing with a few injuries to its players. With striker Ratu Apenisa Anare out, coach Gurjit Singh knows it will be a tough match against Rewa. Yes, in the pool games we were unbeaten, but uh, once you come to the knockout stages, it's always tough. So we have to be very cautious, especially playing Rewa in the home ground and the good setup team, uh, boys, the Rewa team. So we're looking forward and uh, boys are all motivated to play. Although the team is disappointed that the game venue has been changed, they are banking on the support of its fans in Nosori to help them beat Rewa for a shot at the title. Lambasa plays Rewa at 7.30 p.m. on Friday at Ratudakambo Park in Nosori. Eleanor Turangibu, FBC Sports. Four veterinarians will broaden their horizons this Saturday when they take part at the Island Chill Super Marathon. The pet doctors at Vet Essentials in Lamy are excited and ready for the big event. Rohit Deo reports. Like they may be first-timers and aren't worried about winning, but the athletes from Vet Essentials have been doing some serious preparation. We're preparing well for the marathon this Saturday, I think. We've been trying to eat healthy um, and we've participated in a few marathons. I think the fun marathon every Saturday, every first Saturday of the month, I think, um, and the Olympic fun run as well. With a busy schedule set work, the Silver Marathon is a good way to keep healthy for these four. Well, we are looking forward to this Saturday's um, uh, run. Yeah, it's, we're trying to live healthy and uh, be active, especially at, at the working, working place and actually just to help us in our team building. Apart from the major competitions the team has been taking part in, they have a daily schedule for training. We normally knock off early, so we have uh, plenty of time to go home, uh, take a little bit of uh, nap and then we do our, say, afternoon walk or just a little bit of exercise just so that you're, you're up and running. And just... More than 1,500 athletes are expected at the event and this team will be one of many, not only trying to win, but also to promote healthy living and keeping fit.
The Super Marathon, the Super Marathon begins at 6 a.m. at the Thurston Garden on Saturday. Go back team! Oh, here, Dave, BC Sports. That's it from sports this evening. Join Angie later on with weather and in new media. A look at how media consumption trends have changed in China. Details after the break. Bula, Kero Mai Singatoka, Kero Ndotali Taka Navarorong on the radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. I have an initiative. In new media, smartphones have become not only communication tools but also gateways to news and information. Mobile internet media consumption has now surpassed that of television in China, according to a recent report. Angie joins us now with the latest in weather. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Another amazing day came to an end, but hang on in there, just two more days and we are done. Well, coming back to the weather scenario, we had a fair bit of everything today, some showers, sunshine and cloudiness. Looking at the west, there was a mixture of sun and clouds, which mostly continued throughout the day. Eastwards, from Pak Harbor to Suva, we had some cloud cover with few light rain. And up in Vanua Levu, it was a fine and dry day, but showers are more likely to roll in tonight. At sea, strong wind warning remains in force for Fiji waters. And for the tides, low tide tonight will be at 8.44 with a high tide tomorrow morning at 3.03. The beautiful sunrise will be at 6.37. Also tomorrow, we will have another gorgeous day, probably with few clouds. Tomorrow's temps, Nandi is expected to be the warmest with highs of 33 and lows of 22. And looking further on to Friday, there is a band of showers moving our way, but we're not expecting anything major. And that, Jackie, wraps up our FPC weather for tonight. Thanks so much for that, Angie. On Fiji Pulse today, we asked, should the old railway bridge be demolished? They say that they will demolish it. Uh, we don't know whether it's time for them to demolish it, whether uh, how good the bridge is. No, because uh, that will be to remember the, what the old people already done. It should be demolished. It's very risky people crossing on that is the old bridge. Well, um, I think the railroad bridge should be retained because it is uh, a landmark, for a historic landmark, especially for the Nusori town. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, nearly a thousand students gathered in Washington, D.C. to participate in an Olympic-style robotics competition. The gathering of 163 teams of high school students from 157 nations was all, all in an effort to promote science, technology, engineering and math fields among children worldwide. Recapping the main stories, military to work with police for 2018 elections, new railings for railway bridge by month end and students caught in early morning accident. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM. To our poll question this week we are asking, should strict action be taken on those retailers who fail to adhere to the decrease in fuel prices? Visit our FPC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day comes from Otili Rambuku of Nandi. This was taken at the Enamanu in Nandi as the sun sets. The Fiji Airways Airbus FJ911 from Sydney descends onto the Nandi International Airport runway. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, good night.
Kero my singer talker, Kero do Talitaka and Avaro Rong on the radio Fiji one and Domo Viti. I have an initiative. I have a silly talent. The Murama in our money, Nandoma. We do Talitaki and the business of the Nabudo Rong, Barong and Radio Fiji one and Domo Viti. Radio Fiji one and Domo Viti in Wonga and BNN.